Victoria 3 is out. And it's a quite tricky game to learn. So if you want to give yourself a boost and learn the console commands, this is the video for you. So open Victoria 3 in debug mode. Click play in Steam. The launcher will load. Click on game settings and scroll down to open in debug mode. Launch. Off you go. So here we go. We're in debug mode. Start a new game. Sandbox. Hop into the main game. And you'll see a few things that look hmm, slightly off. Slightly a little bit different. And here we go. Oh, what's this? Bay of Biscay. And anyway, let's hop into Austria. And let's play with a few console commands. So th there's probably like over 100 console commands. But a lot of them are kind of like editing, debug, programming tools that you're never really going to need. And not really going to affect your game. So from my humble opinion, I'm going to show off the very best ones in this game that can make a kind of fun experience to make some kind of just fun, goofy games that you might enjoy. Yep, are you down for that? Let's do that. All right, first of all, you need to press the teal key. The teal key is the key below the escape key, above the tab key, and to the left of one. Boom. Here it is. Look at this. So first of all, you can click one of these buttons, change constitution. This will automatically override the existing, the existing government you've got and override it with the one you're clicking here. So in this case, the Republic of Austria. Boom. We have universal suffrage, parliamentary republic. And there we go. That is Austria. The parties have formed. We have a new flag and a democratic republic of Austria is here. Amazing. I'll be honest with you. That's a bit of fun for a bit of role play. However, wouldn't it be more fun to change the laws yourself? We'll get to that in a moment. Anyway, hit the teal key. Let's do something fun. Who likes money? Put your hand up if you like money. Money amount, one million dollars. Pounds, there you go, you gain the money. Can you see that? See the bar go up? And if you press up key in the screen here, it will go back to the previous commands that you entered. So you can see the original command was event debug six. That's what forced me to go for a republic. And you press down once, that brings us back to the money. So another million money, press enter. A million money banked in the account. And then up again, another million money. Okay, you're learning it now. Are we learning? Next one is a fun one. Teal key, yes, men. Okay, all diplomatic options now with the AI are automatically yes. So we click on Russia. See, right click on them and form an alliance with Russia. We have an alliance between the Austrians and the Russians. But what about this? Invite customs union for the papal states? Why not? Boom. Papal states are now in the customs union for Austria. Unification of Italy has become significantly harder. Oh dear. Okay, you want to turn this one off because the AI will take advantage of it. If you unpause the game by pressing space, the AI will take advantage of the fact that there's no requirements to say yes to certain diplomatic options so teal key press up yes men okay boom sway offers have now been disabled it also will affect diplomatic plays this by sway offers it's not just diplomatic options like these but it also be in a diplomatic incident for your option to sway the player in one direction without any said requirements okay what if the austrians wanted to invade serbia would that be a terrible thing to do Oof. Okay, so if we click on the nation here and hover over it, because we're in debug mode, it says at the very top, can you see that? It says country ID 92, and then in brackets, S-E-R. That is the country tag. And if we want to interact with that tag, we need to know what it is. So in this case, we're going to hit the teal key, annex, space, S-E-R, because that's the tag for Serbia. And what is this going to do, do you think? Hit enter. Boom! Serbia is now a part of Austria. This is well and truly the, the worst timeline. Right. What about Moldova as a part of Austria? Is that a good thing? There is also a country ID of 89 too. So you could use that one as well. So Annex 89. Boom. Moldova now part of Austria. The next one's, ah, I think, the most spicy. Teal key, fast. Now, if you don't know the full command, that's not the end of the world. What you need to do is then hit tab and it shows you the other options you have available. So we've got fast mobilize, fast colonize, fast travel, fast institutions, revolution, interest, research. You get the idea. Let's do research. Just type a few letters, then hit tab, and then it'll fill out the rest if you've spelled it correctly. There you go. Fast research has been enabled. Hit research. All, all of a sudden, we now know how to do the oil turbine. Boom. And it researches all the ones required to it. The prefaces. So there you go. And also, we've uh, we also discovered antibiotics and political agitation. 
Interesting. He's a dark times gentleman. I hope there isn't a particular party that forms after this said event. Oof. Just a note as well, if there are any commands that increase the amount of said amount, there's also ones to decrease it as well. So in this case, money, you can do the reverse. You can put yourself in debt. So uh, money minus 10 million. One, two, three. One, two, three. Boom. Minus 10 million. Oh, no, we're in debt. And then again, if you up arrow, we could do the same one. Hit enter. Boom. We have defaulted. Oh, dear. Be aware, the AI will take advantage of any of the fast commands. So you want to hop into here and turn fast off. So fast, R, tab. There's two R's. So R, A, R, S. I don't know how to spell. Fast research, turn it off. There you go. The other fast that are quite fun though as well. We've got fast construction. No, it's fast build. Fast build. There we go. So now you can go into your construction queue and build like you've never built before. What? You want government administration? Hold tab, and we build a load of those. Oh my god, so many of those. And then at the same time, turn it off, because the AI will take advantage of that. And look at that, we now have the biggest bureaucracy in the freaking world, baby. There are now more people in government than there are, well, people. Now this one, I'll admit, is most fun, because passing laws in, in VIC3 is kind of a bit of a pain. So let's just say we do a law. Uh, we need a legitimate government. Oh, we can't pick any legitimate government. Let's, let's, let's switch nations. What you can do really easily is hold control in debug mode and then click on another nation. And that will just instantly switch you to that nation as if you are actually playing it. How convenient is that, right? So go into your laws. We're going to change to free trade. We've only got a 58% chance. Okay, that's actually really high. <laughs> I didn't expect it to be so high. Okay, let's do an unpopular law. What's the most unpopular? An oligarchy. Does that seem like a good idea? <laughs> An oligarchy of France. And this will cause a revolution. You've only got a 14% chance of this possibly happening. However, if we go fast institutions. No, it's not fast institutions. It's fast enact. There we go. E-N-A-C-T. Fast enact. And then you can see now if we unpause the game. 100% and boom. The autocracy of France is back autocratic absolute monarchy for france very scary you know i have a feeling that ai probably doesn't take advantage of this because that means everyone's laws are going to instantly change now mm, i don't know i'm on the fence with that one let me know in the comments anyway fast and act has been turned off there are a bunch here that are kind of self-explanatory fast travels mean generals just teleport institutions take time to progress you can instantly push them up uh, fast revolution, secession. Revolutions don't build up, they just happen instantly, for instance. I guess that could be incredibly chaotic. And of course, like, mobilize and colonize. Instead of it taking only a few months, it happens instantly. How useful are these ones? I'm not actually too sure. Now, I'm on the fence with this one, if how much it benefits you, but you can disable pop growth. So disable pop growth. I have a funny suspicion this is going to speed the game up and... Oh, it's hard to judge because I've got a decent PC, but by looking at the date progressing here, I have a suspicion this is boosting the game speed significantly. So if you're having a late game situation and you're having a very slow game, there might be an option here just to go for that. Just disable pop growth completely and it might give you a better game performance. I'm on the fence with it. Hasn't been tested. Give it a try. Let me know. Comment below. Let me know if it's benefited you. Disable pop growth. Pop growth is back now. And it does look like it's a little bit slower. You know, I'm on the fence. I'm not sure. Some self-explanatory ones. Observe is an interesting one. So now you're playing a multiplayer game, I guess. And the AI is all the players. I guess it's a weird way of looking at it. Anyway, back to Prussia. This one can be quite spicy too. For instance, if you want to create an interesting alternative alt history nation. So you go on the outlier. You're going to add on your interest groups. And that refuses to work. The outlier is broken. Okay. It's because we're observing. I guess I can tag space into pru and then i'm playing as prussia am i playing as prussia or am i still observing i've got to go out of observe mode i'm learning the game as we go here boys well and truly <laughs> anyway outlier there we go so for instance what's to say if we want to create an absolute aristocratic feudal prussia so what we could do is teal key add underscore clout yeah the interest group name which I'll admit is a little bit complex. I'll show you some examples on screen here. As you can see, armed forces, devout, industrialists, they all have like default names. So in this case, we're going to go for landowners. So it's uh, IG underscore 
landowners and how much ideology you want to add to them. In this case, we're going to add 100. Hit OK, and there you go. You've almost got complete support now for the Junkers. However, this is temporary. I think it only lasts for like a month or so, and then it drops down instantly. And there you go. The spike was very short term. I don't think there's a way you can increase it permanently. It's just a way that you can spike it within a very short time frame. Yeah. I suppose you can keep doing it if you wanted to. Add it a thousand. 99.9% .9 Junkers. Ever wanted to change the date? Literal time travel. Date. So yeah, we'll go 2023. This may cause the game to crash. 010101. Zero, one, zero, one, zero, one. Enter. There you go. Welcome to the year 2023. How is it? Are you enjoying it? Is it fun for you? <laughs> it's not fun for me. But then we can change it back if you wanted to as well, so. 1938. Boom, and we're back into... Oh, 1938. Hang on, it's 1838 at the start game, isn't it? 1838. There we go. And I have broken the game. The game will now not progress in time. I have well and truly broken it. Whoops. What are the fun ones? Annex all. Annex underscore all. And the game pauses. Oh my goodness, minute silence for the game. We're about to see the most awesome thing in the world. Are you ready for this? That is a Prussian world conquest. Question would be is why have you not formed Germany? Because Prussia is better than Germany. Come on, if that's not worth a subscription, then nothing is. Can we form Germany? We can fight. Support. Hit support. But the game won't progress anymore because I've broken the date. Whoops. Now, if you want to as well, you can make a few adjust adjustments to your game. Then debug mode underscore mode. And what this will do is it'll disable uh, debug mode. The problem then is you have to back out the game completely and come back into it and launch debug mode if you want debug mode again. Because I will admit debug mode is kind of annoying though with all the pop-ups and one. Not having this stupid deer log error at the bottom right is kind of annoying, I'll admit. So you might want to get rid of it, and that's the way of getting rid of it, debug mode. But my favorite command of all is crash. Which it kind of does exactly what you think it would do. It crashes the game. <laughs> now, there are a bunch of other commands, too, that are quite useful. But a lot of them are, like, coding related, so they're not really useful for you as a player. If any of you guys use any commands that you find quite useful, please let me know in the comments below. If you want to see more of this kind of content, please like and subscribe. And there's a video here you might like. This one a click. This one's made, tailored just for you. Just for you.